throughout this course, we've talked a lot about gain staging. And I think that if you learned anything in this course, that's probably one of the things that you will remember. So if we play back this audio file, we can see that we're peaking out at minus six dB, but we're really focused on peaking out the peaks themselves. And in the digital domain and in the DAW, peaks are so important to keep track of, right? Because once we go over zero in the decibel full scale system, we get digital clipping, digital distortion, which is the thing we absolutely want to avoid. In the analog domain, peaks are treated and viewed very differently. If you go over zero in the analog domain using a like VU, DB VU volume units meter, then it's going to be okay. They're going to be clipped off, but they're going to be clipped off in a much more gentle kind of curvy way as compared to in the DAW where it just squares it right off. And when we're talking about working with Nebula, Nebula is basically hardware incarnate. So we need to gain stage like we would in an analog system. And that's very confusing for a lot of people, but it doesn't have to be. And I think the reason it's so confusing is because there's no perfect reference point that people set. Okay, so what happens is when somebody goes and they model a piece of hardware for Nebula and they sample it, they have to have some kind of reference point at which they've done this sampling. And then you want to mirror that to make sure that you're getting the best sound quality you possibly can. Okay, so there has to be some reference between decibels full scale and decibels VU, volume units. And there isn't something perfect, but what a lot of people tend to use is minus 18 dBFS to equal roughly zero VU. And that's the way that people will calibrate their meters and calibrate all their stuff in the DAW when they're working with Nebula. And for the developers, they'll set the same kind of standard when they're sampling the hardware. And so you want to roughly do the same thing. So let's just go ahead and figure out how we can do that. Well, right now our meter is... We have a peak meter, but then we do have the RMS below. And the RMS is much more similar to um, the VU than the peak. So you can kind of try to eyeball it and get it to be the solid line here. Get that to be around minus 18. But that's definitely not an exact science and not the way that's going to work long term. So instead, what you're going to do is use some kind of a meter. Okay, so we have here this LVL meter 64. And this isn't a perfect VU meter, okay? What we have here is peak dBFS, so this should be the same as what we're seeing here. And it roughly is, minus 6. But when you take this calibration and bring it down, you can now get an RMS meter, and we can set that point to minus 18, have the reference be at minus 18. And now if we look at this... What this is telling me is if we're trying to reference that minus 18, we're coming in way too hot. We want this to be around zero because that's what they're seeing on their VU meter with the hardware when they're sampling it. That's all it comes down to. And it assumes that they've, choose, that they've chosen minus 18 as that reference point, which isn't always true, but it's kind of like the perfect guess to work with, okay? There's some people who've said that's the standard. Not everybody is gonna play by those rules because just think about it. Let's say that the person decided that this was gonna be at minus 15 instead of minus 18. I mean, now we're like perfectly right in the range. And this would be the way we'd want to set it. But typically it is done at minus 18. And that's probably what you want to work with. So this isn't a perfect VU meter. One that, well, there are no perfect VU meters. But one that's much more accurate is a paid plugin. This is what I actually use. We're not going to use it for our purposes here. But I just want to see how this compares if this is minus 18. And this level meter is at minus 18 just so we can see. Yeah, so we're consistently slamming up against the plus three on this LSR meter, whereas on this Klanghelm one, we're not. So what this tells me is that I can actually probably set this to be minus 17. And if we think back to what we looked at in Nebula, on the master page, true RMS 17.
Interesting. So it's almost like they've made that same conclusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use minus 17, um, but that's just because of this particular meter. If you have a VU meter, some kind of plugin, if you buy something like the Klanghelm VU meter, if you're on Windows, there's a lot of good free options for VU meters. You can use minus 18 to be that reference. But for this meter, we're going to use minus 17. Okay, so when we're working with Nebula, we want to try to maximize um, the sampling of the hardware. And to do that, we want this to be right in around that zero mark. Going over a little is fine. Like, I'd be fine with this. But let's imagine that this started like its original value, which was here. It's going to be a lot louder, but you'll see how the meter is just pegged out. So that is not what you want to see. So going into Nebula, you want this to be hovering in and around the zero mark. And to do that, I could use a tool device. Or since this is the first thing in the chain, I could use the clip gain. Let's use a tool device here. And just make sure that we put it before the meter and before Nebula. Get rid of our other meter here. And we'll just set this in. Okay, so I'd be pretty happy with that. A little bit over is fine. That's actually kind of what you might expect. And every time you use Nebula, you want to be consistent about this. Going into Nebula, wherever it is in the chain, you want to set it up this way, even if it means losing a lot of volume. The beauty of working in the digital domain and working at 24-bit is that things can be quiet and be brought back up without really losing a whole lot of fidelity. All right, so now that we're going in at a good level, we can now finally apply some kind of a processor. So let's start with something that probably isn't going to work that well. Let's go to a reverb and bring in the chamber. So I just click it, I load it in, and we listen back. And now you're looking at this and you're asking yourself, how could I extend the length of this reverb? What if I want this to be like three seconds in length? Well, it's impossible. All of these programs in Nebula, you have to imagine them as being like presets that you can't really alter a whole lot except for the dry wet balance. And here I can do that. So I can take this down. And maybe you like the way that sounds. I personally don't like the way that sounds. And if you don't like the way it sounds, you kind of have to then go to a different program. That's just the way to think about it. You don't want to touch a whole lot of these other knobs, okay, whenever possible. This knob here, this liquidity knob, sometimes it will smooth an effect out. And if you bring this up a little bit, it might bring it into play. But that's the only one you want to mess with. And even then, be kind of careful with it. Obviously, every program varies. So let's try something different. Let's try the room. So in the case of the room, I think it actually fits and works really well. I like the sound of that quite a bit. And I'd probably go with the setting like this. Obviously, I'd bring this into taste. And one thing to be aware of is that um, sometimes these numbers just really don't correspond with what's going on. If you want it to really correspond, just go and drag from inside of the window here. And you can always hold down shift to make this be a little bit more fine-tuned. Okay. So something like that would sound really good. And now coming out of the plugin, the setting that you have, the level that you set, isn't really as important unless you're trying to match and just kind of gain stage here. So we could see what we had before. And what we have after. After. 
and it's virtually identical. We've added a tiny bit of gain, which we could compensate for here. But even so, just by a very small amount. All right, so that's the basic idea with gain staging in Nebula. You're going to follow those same kind of rules and guidelines every single time you bring it in. So remember, you're thinking about metering in the hardware analog domain, not what we're used to doing when we're really concerned about headroom in the digital domain. Peaks, not as important.